This is probably our most ambitious film to date. It has a ton of visual effects shots. There was a lot of uncharted water when it came to visual effects. That just brings it to a whole nother level. Finishing up production on our previous film called Greg, Emily Topper was one of the stars of the movie. We knew we wanted to work with her again. So literally kind of one of the last days of filming, we talked to her about it and we said, hey, we'd love to write something specifically for you and have you be the lead in it. The beginning of 2023, uh, one day we were at the office, hadn't really solidified what our plans were for the project with Emily. We had talked about and did some test footage of working on a sci-fi feature that kind of got sidelined for the time being. Each year we try to release these short films and we have a festival that we host so the clock was ticking and we needed something to be written sooner than later. One day we were just working and Luke's like, hey, I want to show y'all this script. So he pulled me and Alice aside and Luke had written a full script for Melody Skylark and the Cosmic Soup. In typical Luke fashion, he had done a ton of stuff just behind the scenes and had this really awesome project to present. The initial idea was Emily gives it's a message through a bowl of alphabet soup. I had no idea where this message was coming from or why she was getting it, but the visual in my head was pretty much like the scene from The Matrix when Neo gets the phone call. In order to escape, he has to follow all the directions. So the idea was she's gonna kind of follow the instructions that are being given to her through this bowl of soup. The script feels so familiar in a way to movies that I grew up watching, things like The Last Starfighter. It just feels like a familiar world. I grew up watching those loving films films like that and now getting to be in one and play the captain is pretty cool. I don't get to fly in any spaceships, I'm just in soup, but I am still proud to serve in my position. So I reached out to Ryan King about this role. He was interested in it right away. The only hesitation we had initially was we've already done that short film about soup where he's the lead character. It's called Superman and he shoots soup out of his nipples. I actually didn't know there were non-soup related acting gigs. My whole resume and all my studies, all my work up to this point has all been soup. You know, I plan to continue that way even now that I know the world is larger. I'll stay in my lane. Zap! Soup son! One of the biggest hurdles when you're making independent films is finding a location. So you either have to have budget to rent a location or you have to know somebody with a location you can use for free or you just have to pretty much film it at your own house. When Luke wrote Melody Skylark, he looked at the space around him and he wrote what he knew. So we try to tell this epic space adventure all within the confines of my home. We move from the kitchen to the bathroom. The epic battle scene literally happens in my bedroom. We were able to just come to the office like normal and then just bring all the gear upstairs and start shooting it's because we were already familiar with the space we kind of knew what angles we could get and what was realistic for the movie and it made production go by way faster than it would have been if we were in an unfamiliar space pretty much the whole movie happens in this one location there are a few parts like some flashbacks with melody's character which we ended up just doing in kind of a black box type setting we just put black fabric up and lit her up to look really cool and then there's one other part which is the boss the boss is on a zoom call with Melody at the beginning of the film. We needed sort of an office type location. We didn't really have the budget and we didn't really even have the time to go do that. We thought the easiest way to pull this off is to film it here in our own office, in our studio, but it doesn't look like a high-rise building or some sort of corporate office. So instead, I used Midjourney AI and generated what looks like a really cool office building and we were gonna use that for the background. And we could have easily filmed on a green screen and we've done that for a lot of projects and it works fine. You've seen all this stuff like The Mandalorian where they're filming on a volume and they've got this giant LED wall. It looks super realistic. They're using Unreal Engine synced up with the cameras. Well, we were gonna do a really small, janky version of that and use our flat screen TV in the office, throw the background on it, set up the camera, and we'd have our actor, Patrick Lemon, sit in front of that. It looks just like this guy is in his office on a sky rise talking on Zoom. It ended up working perfectly. I don't know what he thought when he came came in and saw he's gonna act in front of a TV screen, but it looks great on camera and that's what really matters. That's not gonna be a problem, is it?
This was probably our most ambitious film to date. We shot this film mostly in three days. It has a ton of visual effects shots. Despite the fact that it all happens in one location, a lot of stuff happens in this script. In order to pull all this off, we needed practical special effects and we also needed visual effects. The best visual effects are often done in tandem with practical effects. So the first one that comes to mind is John the Mailman's gun. That was a Nerf gun that Luke ended up painting and we like kind of hit some lights into it. If you can actually create that lighting on set, and then you just heighten it with your assets and your, you know, the visual effects that you're adding in. That just brings it to a whole nother level. Another cool practical effect was the movement of the boxes to form Andrew Vega's mech suit that John wears. We had to do these close-ups to move the boxes and when you add sound effects to it, it really sells the effect that some cosmic force is forming this mech suit. John's character is a delivery man. He's sort of an unassuming antagonist. Melody's used to seeing him deliver her packages all the time, though this time he shows up with a huge stack of boxes that she didn't even order. Ultimately, those boxes become John's mech suit. Luke did a really awesome job, and especially him and Ellis towards the end, of making this giant mech suit that Mickey, our actor, got to wear. And we wanted it to be an actual cardboard mech suit. When you see him in the film, it looks like cardboard. It's not like it's painted like metal, or it's like we're trying to make it look more real. It's supposed to look like boxes that formed into this suit. The one thing Luke and I talked about was the mech suit we thought from the beginning not to have it look like the classic mech suit Ripley wears in the movie Alien. We knew we wanted it to have a kind of Gundam vibe and then the helmet to have almost like a little bit of a Master Chief vibe. So I used those for reference and started just cutting and folding and using a ton of hot glue. Eventually it turned into this. Melody, you're not talking to that cosmic butt sniffer, are you? With the cardboard, it almost takes on like a Minecraft look, and I think it kind of adds to the humor, but also the cool sci-fi nature of what we were doing with that character. Captain Stargard, the whole concept was that when she puts the bowl of soup in the microwave and hits start, he's going to appear like a hologram, except made out of soup. On paper, you can write that, you can visualize it, but how do you actually pull that off? This one, it was so important. Like he has a whole scene where he talks to Melody and it is pretty much an exposition dump. If this doesn't look right, it's going to really kill the whole movie. Ellis had the idea for us to do our first fully CG character. Our first 100% CG talking character. When it came to creating Stargard for the movie, there was a lot of factors that went into that before production even started. I actually had to go into Unreal Engine and start playing around with, okay, how am I gonna take an actor's live performance and put it onto digital actor that we could overlay and post later on? And not only that, how can I make the digital actor be made out of soup and interacting with the environment? There was a lot of trial and error that came with this, but what I ended up doing is I was able to set up on my phone a live link that went directly to Unreal Engine while Ryan was performing his role as Stargard. The live link would capture all of Ryan's facial performance and in real time, it would apply it to my model of Ryan or Stargard. The benefit to doing that is that after Ryan wrapped and was done performing, we were still able to move the camera around and get whatever angle we wanted of Stargard after the fact. It's an interesting mix of, of having to act and actually bring forth the proper emotions for the character while understanding the the parameters of this technology and how much you have to move your face definitely a learning curve to it it was awesome getting to do motion capture it has been an acting dream of mine so getting to finally actually do it and see how it works has been so much fun when you're making these indie short films you're also thinking about how many characters are you going to actually have how many actors do you need to be able to pay there's one small part in the script for a young girl that's supposed to be the younger version of Melody Schuyler. We thought maybe we could just de-age her. Maybe she could play her younger self. And so Ellis found a really super jank way to pull that off. What I ended up doing was actually taking something called Face App that you can get on your iPhone or Android. I took the shot of Emily when she's opening the guitar case and I created a bunch of like key images and then I took those into Face App and I de-aged her through that. And that uses artificial intelligence to create a childlike version of Emily. From there, now that you have all of these key images of her as a child, you stitch them together through something called EB Synth. That creates the in-between shots to make the entire take of her being a child.
I guess my takeaways kind of parallel the themes of the movie itself. Melody's whole journey is about finding her purpose, her passion, and following her dreams. In a lot of ways, it seemed like on the page and even in those early stages, it seemed like we were about to bite off way more than we could chew. There was a lot of uncharted water when it came to visual effects. For us, making these short films, they're not necessarily some sort of big return on investment. What they are is our passion. The project really lives or dies on the passion and work that everyone on the cast and crew puts into it. You want to challenge yourself when making films, but you also want to make sure you knock it out of the park. The whole team did an amazing job in every aspect of the movie. Every single person who worked on this movie really made the difference. These are stories and films that we feel like we need to get out into the world, stories that we want to tell, and they're a blast to make. It was honestly just a lot of fun. It's a really goofy movie, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. I think, if anything, I learned making the film just like Melody learns that it's important to follow your passions and follow your dreams. Once you figure out what that passion or dream is, don't give up. I'm super proud of what we were able to accomplish. I think everyone brought their A game and I'm so happy that people are able to now watch Melody Scott Lark and the Cosmic Suit.